what we need to explore a little bit are uh, function maximum and minimum values. And uh, looking at the graph, first of all, just to kind of get a feel for what, what we mean by a maximum or a minimum value. And then uh, kind of make a tie in to, uh, to some derivative uh, stuff uh, that we, you know, we've been talking about derivatives and how, how maybe that can tie in to maximum minimum values. The idea of maximum minimum values is pretty easy if you look at it graphically speaking <clears throat> because this uh, first example in the handout uh, I've given you there is uh, fairly obvious here that I've got some peaks and valleys um, more or less, I mean, if we have a, a nice, nice one like this, we'll, we'll look at explore some other possibilities of maximum minimums. They may not necessarily be a peak or a valley, but if we have peaks and valleys, I think it's fairly obvious uh, what we mean by this. Yeah, if we've got a got a little valley in the a graph, that's of course where we're going to consider a minimum value. Um, so we have a couple of valleys, and then we've got a peak here. <clears throat> And so those are going to be uh, tied in with our maximum. And so that's, uh, that's the idea. Peaks and valleys is, is one way to look at it from the uh, graphical perspective anyway, where we have maximums and minimums. Um, now, why, why do we consider those minimums, for example, here? Um, well, technically what we call our local minimum and local maximums. So let's talk about the local minimum here. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, we call them local minimum, or you might also uh, be referred to as a relative in some, some places, uh, a relative also minimum. What do we mean by that? <clears throat> so right here, we've got, uh, we've got the location of a local minimum. What do we mean by that? Well, what we mean by that is it's not it's not a minimum everywhere, but it, it's minimum in a local sense because if you look at the points around it, it is lower, if you will, than the other points. And so that's why we consider it a minimum. And to get, get even more specific, it's a minimum in what way? Well, <clears throat> the x value is not a minimum because if I look at you know x values on either side of that, there's smaller x values, but what's minimum about it is the y value. And so when we say local minimum or local relative minimum, we're, we're meaning function value wise. <clears throat> so it's a function value that's um, less than the ones around it. And so in this case, I've got a function value. The function value is actually zero. Maybe this wasn't the best example, but uh, the function value of zero <clears throat> is what we would consider the local uh, minimum here. The function value at zero, which is zero. And we have another one too down here because maybe this is a better one. If you look at that, which I think I think that it's the function value at three, <clears throat> Which is, uh, I think it's it's somewhere. And if we plug it in, I think we can get it. But it's it's negative twenty seven, I believe. <clears throat> so you see see the idea here. It's just it's just a minimum value for the function that's less than the other ones around it. And then the other, the flip side, then is we have a local maximum or a relative maximum. And it's a function value that's greater than the ones around it. And so, yeah, we, that's the peaks here, <clears throat> which in this case, it's at f of 1. And I believe that's 5. Plug that in. Yeah, 5. All right. <clears throat> so that's, that's the idea. If you look at it, I mean, it's pretty easy to pick them out there. And we'll... Uh, talk more, get into more specifics later on, but you're with me there. Now, I would uh, point out here, I, I put these in this form, that this is the form I would like them to be because 
that's that's the minimum. <clears throat> what I'm saying is, you know, don't say the minimum is zero zero. Okay, well, yes, in a way, but this this is the form I would prefer. F of zero, and then you can put the function value there uh, if you like. But this is the form format I would like. If I ask for the local minimum or local maximum, this f of x equals y, the y value is uh, the appropriate uh, appropriate form when it asks for minimums. Just a little slight detail there that I stickler on. Okay. Anyway, all right. <clears throat> so just to show you, I mean, you have to know necessarily the definition here. Maybe not, but just to kind of uh, formalize it, here, here's the definition. Just so you can see kind of how sometimes mathematics uh, definitions work. All right, function f has a local min minimum at c if f of c is greater than or equal to f of x when x is near c. Yeah, so that just kind of, so you've got an f of c is, I should say, uh, less than. I did my uh, definition reverse of what I had on my paper. All right. So a function value of local min at c if f of c is less than or equal to f of x when x is near c. So this value, the c value, the function value at c, is less than the ones around it, or equal to uh, could be. Uh, so yeah, you're just you're looking at this value. This is our c value for this particular one. F of three is less than f of 2.9, f of 3.1. Those those points are rounded. So that that's what the definition would look like. For local min, and then of course, uh, f has a local max if f of c is greater than or equal to f of x with x near c. So it's just the reverse. The f of c, the function value is greater than the ones around it. That's that's basically what that says. So, just wanted to show you that uh, definition. Just just throwing some math definitions. Um, <clears throat> one other term: local extrema. That's just a, a broader term to include, if, if it asks for what are the local extrema of a function, it just, that's just grouping all the local maxes and local mins together, okay? Local extrema is just uh, the collection of local maxes and mins grouped together. Okay, no, tell the English folks on using that uh, apostrophe S there. <laughs> <All right. clears throat> um, all right. So these are the local extrema for, uh, so this, this grouping here, that would be the local, the local extrema for this particular problem, okay? All right, now, one other term, uh, I guess two other terms, <clears throat> while we've got number one up here. There's also the idea of an absolute extreme or an absolute max. So <clears throat> while I've got number one here, Absolute min, minimal, is uh, 
it's the minimum function value for the uh, specified domain. Let's say it that way. So this is the minimum function value for a specified or implied, let's say, domain. The minimum function value for a specified or implied domain. All right, so in this particular case, if I look, so you're looking at, for absolute min, you're looking over the whole specified or the whole implied domain, which in this particular case, we're looking everywhere. Sometimes it may limit it, say look at between zero and, and 10. But in this case, we're not specifying a domain, so it's, it's for the entire domain. That's our implication. Well, if we look at this whole graph then, What's the minimum function value for the entire thing? In other words, what's the lowest function value that we have, the least function value? Well, if you go through all the function values here, down here, right? That would be the absolute lowest one. So the lo least function value here is that negative 27 at uh, Had that we had another local min of zero f of zero, but it's not it's uh, higher than this one, right? So that that's what when we say absolute min, it's the lowest point of all, okay? And then the flip side of that, of course, is the absolute maximum, and so that same idea, but in the maximum sense. So it's the maximum function value for the domain. <coughs> Specified or implied otherwise. Okay. Now in our particular example here, what do you got there? Is there an absolute maximum for this one? Well, if we look at this point, we can't say it's an absolute maximum because is it the highest point there is? No, there's certainly, on either side of this, higher points than that. Uh, matter of fact, that's not the absolute max because this one would be higher. Matter of fact, that just keeps going up and that keeps going up. Is there an absolute maximum here? Is there a maximum function value for this entire domain? No, there is not. So for this particular function, <clears throat> for number one, there's no absolute. because of the, the tails there. The tails are going up. <clears throat> With there, there's a local max, but that's just for points around it. As far as the absolute maximum goes, no, there's not a, a, a highest point because the tails just keep hitting off in front. All right? <clears throat> All right, now, just for a quick, again, get a lot of mileage here out of number one. Just for a quick preview, if you will, of where we're going with this, do you notice something else about those apps, uh, the local maxes and mins? Back to local maxes and mins. Do you notice something about what we could say about the derivative for the local, where the local maxes and mins occur? What's true about both for the local maxes and the local mins? <clears throat> Slope of the tangent line. What's the uh, tangent line look like here? 
This is a horizontal, isn't it? What's uh, the derivative here? Well, it's the slope of the tangent line. Slope of the tangent line. Got horizontal tangent. So what's the derivative for each one of those? This. Zero, right? The slope zero. So we'll tie into that uh, a little more in the future, but uh, just just point that out, okay? <clears throat> All right, number. Uh, let's move on to number two then. Number two on the handout, I've got y equals the absolute value of x minus three. Which of course is the, the V shape there in the corner here is that uh, one, two, three. <clears throat> All right, uh, in this particular case, uh, let's start with the local local men. Anything? Any local men's there? So a local men is just uh, a low point. Uh, it's where the low point occurs, or the function value where the low, low point occurs. Yeah, I've got I've got a point that's low uh, around the in reference to the points around it. <clears throat> And so, yeah, I've got a local min here at f of 3, right? And that would be f of 3 equals 0 is the way, like I said, I like that form. <clears throat> because the minimum value is the function value, which in this case is f of 3 is 0. Any uh, local maxes? Now, you won't necessarily have either one of these. In this particular case, there is no local max. have a local min but not a local max. Now, going back to the last thing we talked about on number one, what about the derivative here for our local min? Where, what's the uh, derivative at the local min? Well, it's not derivative of zero here, is it? What, what have I got at the local min in this particular case? Got a corner? What's the derivative of corners? Does not exist, right? So the derivative at the local min here does not exist. <clears throat> so it's not always the derivative is zero at your local min and maxes. It could be that the local min's and maxes uh, the derivative does not exist. Um, like I said, that'll tie into to another point in the near future. Any questions about that? Okay, 